oils. Today we are going to look at the essential oils and terpenes which come under the fragrances topic. So essential oils are the concentrated extracts of the volatile non-water soluble aroma compounds from plants and they are composed of many different organic compounds. You'll see these a lot of the time in things like deodorants, cosmetics, foods, cleaning products and the essential oils that are present in these um, products are things like camphene or limonene or lavandolol or geraniol. They are all essential oils. For example, we've got lavandolol at the side here with a very complex um, structure. So it is mostly a hydrocarbon structure where we see every point on this structure represents a carbon. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbons. It also has a hydroxyl group and two double bonds as well. So these are complex um, and large um, organic chemical molecules. If we want to extract essential oils from things like orange peel or lemon peel, the equipment that we need to set up is a distillation. We want to extract the compounds through distillation. So what we first need is a, usually a round bottom flask. And this round bottom flask will be connected to a tube which contains our essential oil or the product that we want to extract the essential oil from. In here we would have water and to that water we are going to apply some heat. Now we would want to put our lemon peel or orange peel, whatever it was that we were trying to extract the essential, the essential oil from, into some cotton wool. So in the middle, so almost blocking off the tube, you would have your cotton wool plus plant extract. So in our case, that is orange peel. And once you have extracted or once you have heated up your water, your water will then turn into steam. That steam will be carried up the neck of the round bottom flask and through the tube which contains your cotton wool and your plant extract or orange peel in this case. The steam will then gather, for example, the essential oil. So the essential oil will become dissolved in the steam and the steam will carry it through a condenser. Now we in school use a wet paper towel as a condenser and we know that this wet paper towel allows the steam to convert back into or to turn back into a liquid and we can then collect that liquid in for example a test tube. So this will be our steam or rather it's turned back into water plus the essential oil that you have extracted. So I'll go through that one more time. The steam that we are heating up, uh, sorry, the water that we are heating up turns into steam. The steam rises up the neck of the round bottom flask and through the tube which contains your plant extract. The steam carries the essential oil through the tube and down into the condenser where it turns back into a liquid and it can be collected in a test tube. 
Now, terpenes are compounds based on a molecule of isoprene, and essential oils contain molecules of terpenes. They are basically terpene lots of terpene molecules joined together. So, terpenes are compounds based on isoprenes, and the isoprene unit is this unit 2 methyl buta 1 3 diene, which has the molecular formula C5H8. And all terpenes contain isoprene units joined together. Therefore, to calculate the number of isoprene units in a terpene, all you need to do is add up the number of carbons in the molecule and divide it by five. That will tell you how many isoprene units you have. A unit of isoprene So it's 2-methylbuta-1,3-diene. So we've got four carbons. That's why we've got buta there. It's 1,3-diene. So we've got a double bond at carbon 1 and a double bond at carbon 3. We have a methyl group at carbon 2. So that's here. And then the rest of the carbons will have hydrogens attached until they have four bonds. We can do that a little bit better here. So this is what a unit of isoprene looks like. And you have to be able to draw the isoprene unit as well as naming the isoprene unit. And remember that the name of an isoprene unit is 2-methylbuta-1,3-diene. So as I said before, essential oils like limonene here are made up of isoprene units. So essential oils are terpenes um, in fact and if I want to work out how many terpene units I have in a molecule all I need to do is count the number of carbons in the molecule so I'm starting with limonene here and I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten carbons in this um, molecule and each isoprene unit contains five carbons because remember isoprene is C5, H8. So if I divide my 10 carbons by 5, that gives me two isoprene units. And beta carotene, um, carotene sorry, has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So beta carotene has 40 carbons. And if I divide those 40 carbons by 5, that gives, if I, so beta carotene has 40 carbons. And if I divide those 40 carbons by 5, that gives me 8 isoprene units. Terpenes, like any other organic molecule, can be oxidised. So chemists must be aware of the reactions of terpenes to ensure that the products containing essential oils remain stable for the lifetime of the product. And terpenes can be oxidised to form new compounds which have different properties to the original terpene. So for example, if we look at the terpenine um, menthol um, across here, so we've got menthol here. Menthol can be oxidised, and I know that when I'm oxidising a molecule like this that I've never seen before, a large organic molecule, I'm focusing on the functional group. So this is in fact a secondary alcohol. It is an OH, a hydroxyl group, which is attached to a carbon, which is attached to two other carbons. And when I oxidise a secondary alcohol, such as this one, I'm drawing out the molecule exactly as it was before. 
And the only difference is now my secondary alcohol becomes a ketone. And this is methanone, which is found in peppermint oil. So our methanol turns into a completely different product, methanone, once oxidised.